हाँ वेट करो ओके 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू हेलो technical glitch ma'am is there and we have to just start within a minute and youtube uh, is also on so bhumika meanwhile uh, you take charge and uh, begin and how we uh, you know how can the face of the speaker will be there on the screen who will do that uh sir the host has to uh, has to pin her on the screen uh, the host has so, the option uh, this mail is not going i don't know why भूमिका यस सर कैन यू सेंड अ मेल टू मैम श्योर सर आई डू दैट द लिंक गीता लूथरा एट द रेट जी मेल डॉट कॉम इमीडिएटली शी इज नॉट गेटिंग द मेल Yeah, I have sent it. I have sent it. Okay, sir. Yeah, and just you can begin. She will join any time now. To see if she joins, then please let me immediately. ये म्यूट करिए सिमरन है क्या शुभान यस सर कर दिया कर दिया हाँ प्लीज म्यूट करिए गीता मैम को देखिए आ गई यस शी इज देयर शी इज देयर या मैम वी कैन सी यू मोस्ट वेलकम नाउ यू आर Uh, uh, now we can see you and we can very well uh, thank you very much and it's a great honor to uh, have you ma'am it's a great honor i must say thank you so much can uh, we have screen sharing so that i can uh... yeah screen sharing shubhang yes sir yes sir making ma'am the host yeah make ma'am host and uh, ma'am i would uh, you know uh, before uh, bhumika will introduce uh, uh, the, to the gathering and i'm very glad you know i wanted to share with you i have received more than 150 messages stating that wow this is geeta ma'am who's uh, coming and they are your fan i was not aware that you are so popular among the students that's lots amazing it's people <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i said lots of misplaced people <laughs> no 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 that's uh, uh, really great and uh, uh now uh, i would request bhumika to begin and uh, sir uh, if the screen sharing can be disabled for a minute uh, ma'am can you yes. please disable yeah yeah till the introduction part then ma'am you can proceed yes, with the screen no, sharing no, thank you so after much. i will take at least 5 to 10 minutes then ma'am will have to sure stop. sure sure i'll start with the introduction and please request everyone to mute uh, their and this uh, why this screen uh, is not coming like normal 
Shubham, for for a minute. Uh, kindly yes, answer, sir. Yes, sir. Normal and when ma'am's turn will come, we'll give the screen to her. Uh, so ma'am is the host, so I cannot do now anything. Okay, then we'll start like this. No problem. Ma'am, you are the host. Can you yes, make Shubhang once again the host? Yes, of course. Yeah, please make Shubhang host, and then he'll make you once again. Shubhang is there. Thank you very much. Shubhang has the option of making ma'am the co-host, wherein yeah. she can. Be the co-host along with Shubhang as well. Yeah, we've done the co-host. Okay. 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 I'll Hi, begin. Rupika. Sure, sir. Greetings to all. BSK Legal, a renowned and reputed law firm dealing in insurance law, commercial criminal arbitration, and many other legal fields, in collaboration with Briefcase, a digital platform providing case briefs with judgments, legal news, and legal study material, is to. proud to organize this webinar on the topic media trial the legal aspects for this session we have with us our esteemed guest ms geeta luthra who is a senior advocate in the supreme court of india she has a masters in llm and mphil in international relations from the university of cambridge uk she is the vice president of the indian council of arbitration fiki member icc india chapter core committee member law asia and international association of family lawyers she has appeared as counsel in several landmark cases and has expertise in various facets of law including criminal law constitution law and many other legal fields it's a pleasure to have you with us ma'am we mm -hmm. also have with us our learned advocate mr sanjay k chatha who is the founding partner in the litigation and arbitration compliance group of the firm bsk legal His area of practice focuses on civil and criminal uh, disputes, labor employment law, and many other legal fields. Under his supervision, the present firm is successfully handling cases in over six hundred and fourteen district consumer forums throughout the length and breadth of India. Sir, kindly take over, please. Uh, sir, uh, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? thank you very much bhumika you are always very kind thank you very much and without wasting much time i would uh, first uh, from core of my heart would like to thank our honorable guest uh, the, you know a very renowned advocate and you know she she hails from such a family uh, you know if i'll speak about it this webinar will be less the contribution of her for the academicia is also brilliant we all are well aware the i have uh, so far ma'am for your consumption i wanted to say i must have conducted 10 or more webinars and we are regularly doing it i have never received such a big response which the entire zoom is jam and here in uh, youtube i could see more than you know it's in three digits four digits so this is for the first time welcome and thank you very much it's a great honor for me and for all of us all the students lawyers and uh, i have been uh, you know from jammu some lawyers have joined today and uh, we have with us mr parthu banerji who is director legal max we have with us uh, uh, mahak uh, agrawal who is a uh, great uh, luminary legal luminary uh, i welcome all of you uh, as far as the subject is concerned ma'am uh we all are well aware uh, i wanted to uh, say that uh, this is the media is the fourth pillar i would just give an introduction so that most of our listeners who are students as well as lawyers they will appreciate what uh, you will be uh, uh, explaining to them later on but what basically media which is the fourth pillar of democracy as we call call it it has a great influence on masses we are all well aware that uh, for a vibrant democracy media is one of the prerequisites uh and we have also seen in past not near past but also you know from the uh, previous years you know 10 10 of uh, more than 4 or 5 decades we have been seeing then wherever there is a sensational criminal case happens
media you know thirsty for the uh, sensation the thirst for sensation as we call it ma'am and be it any media television print media and even today social media we see that uh, uh, they start publishing their own version of the facts which is which we see that sometime it is it is wrong but uh, they call it investigative journalism now what is the impact of this investigative journalism we will talk about it and i know who is the best better than you to explain about it we have seen that uh, individuals reputation uh, is is very very important and the impact of this individual impact on this individual reputation by creating a, you know widespread uh, perception of guilt or innocence uh, is is that what i feel is media trial their their perception widespread perception whether is it wrong or uh, right you they do it ma'am as uh, the other thing which i would like to say that there is there exists law we have got the entire press has got the freedom of press constitution 19a is very much there which uh, which provides for uh, the freedom of uh, speech and expression to the media but there is a reasonable restriction my listeners most of them are students they know article 192 reasonable restrictions are there and the press has to conduct themselves within this reasonable restrictions we have seen that there is an article article 21 which provides for life and liberty ma'am that is the most fundamental of the all fundamental uh, rights which are provided in part 3 of the constitution the right to privacy which is implicit in article 21 uh, we are well aware of uh, justice putto swami's judgment but now there is a contradiction if we see article 21 192 if as, as far as the media media trial is concerned if we see the implication of right to privacy on article 21 and we would like your views on that as well we would love to have your views on media trial not only uh, we we are well aware that it not only impacts the accused it also impact the victim side so privacy of uh, privacy of an individual is to be protected and it has to just in case there is a larger public interest then only we can take it, take it up even right to uh, right to information rti also provides very categorically very clearly that um, uh, uh, article uh, section 8 if i am not wrong it is specifically mentions that all the ex- all the information is not to be disclosed so similarly at par another lo- legal facet to the entire discussion which we are going to take today is right to reputation in case the reputation is uh, uh, is damaged it is uh, uh, it is violated this right you have not only civil remedy but also the criminal remedy is there criminal uh, uh, very recently our supreme court had adjudicated that criminal law de- criminal defamation has to exist it can not it, it was challenged well then uh, what uh, little bit more i wanted to say about is that the the another facet of contempt of court yes in case you know you are not we all are well aware all there are provision of contempt of court if any thing which affects the dignity of court anything which affect the fair trial it amounts to contempt of court and there is a punishment now we have to see whether the 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 these uh, media people they what they whether they give this a value or not for their trp for their circulation they cannot go rampant on it now i would uh, the, there is a old famous uh, saying that one is innocent till he is proved guilty how can they violate they cannot they have to differentiate between accuse and criminal accuse a different criminal all different that's what uh, uh, is the other angle where uh, we would like to hear you today and one more thing that everybody has a right to free trial that is fundamental uh, if not uh, fundamental right that is very important right which all of us has 
Similarly, we have seen that courts have passed various orders restraining. Even in one case, I remember, I don't remember the name of the case, but the, the court has restrained one uh, media house for acting for one month. Then we have seen court passing certain orders, re, uh, uh, restraining, passing injunction order. I remember Abhishek uh, Manu Singhvi's case where uh, restriction was, order was passed by the Honorable Delhi High Court. But on the other hand, I wanted to just touch base. There are few cases if media would not have played important and crucial role, like Pradarshi Muttu case, like uh, Jessica Lal case, Nakesh Katana case, then uh, Bejal Joshi rape case. All these cases where the role of media was appreciated. On the other hand, we have got Ayushri Talwar case. We have got case of uh, Janendra Saraswati, where Andhra Pradesh High Court, Mahima, uh, Madras High Court, as well as Supreme Court, they criticize media. On the same same way, I can also mention about few other cases like Adarsh Ghotala, Supna Lake case, Coal Block Deal, CWG. All these are media. They have only uh, 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 given the input, and they but. Now we have to see where is the balance. We have seen the power of media is so big that in Beaufort's, Rajiv Gandhi's government has gone. So, and even today, I have no hesitation saying that the current government is totally controlling media. That's another facet. So, uh, whether this investigative journalism, what is your take on it? That's what, and uh, where I would not uh, touch uh, you know, or uh, take more of time because many of these students are waiting for you. Thank you very much once again. And I wanted to tell you all that ma'am has joined us from Masuri today. She is sitting in Masuri and the uh, entire day was packed. I remember ma'am had a conference at four o'clock, three o'clock. And prior to that, today she has four cases. She did all them from there. And uh, thank you very much for coming. And please, uh, the entire uh, meeting is yours, ma'am. Most welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate, though less deserved, but thank you very much. Uh, can we, I'm just uh, putting on the PPT as well. All right, and, yes. Uh, yeah. We'll go with that. So should it, can't I do it like that? Yes, ma'am, yes, uh, absolutely fine. You can go ahead. You are there? We can read yes. that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, the first, I think Sanjay's given a beautiful introduction um, and it sort of takes case of care of most of what I'll say, except it would maybe be slightly more in depth. Uh, Lord Denning in his book, Due Process, talks about the importance of due process in a country which is governed by the rule of law. Now, what is rule of law? Rule of law is that uh, every person is in, in, entitled to a fair trial, however, however dastardly his act may have been, however bad his act may appear to the public. However heinous his crime may appear to the public, he is entitled to be treated to be innocent unless he is shown to be guilty. Then how do we protect such a person? How do we ensure that such a person gets a fair trial? That in fact is going to be my subject today. You know, today, Yesterday was a day of the print media. Then we had the electronic media. It by far took the print media by storm. And today is the world of social media. Social media has not, over, not only taken us by a storm, it's sort of overtaken us by a deluge. So we had a print media which was very powerful, which could make or break empires. Then we got electronic media, which 
the reach of which was far over and more immense than that of the print media. And now we have social media where sometimes we have fake news and the courts have been very, have find, and the governments have been finding it difficult how to balance this freedom of speech with social media and our right to give forwards. And an example I would say is that sometimes you attribute that at so-and-so mandir, this is happening with Ganpati Maharaj Ji. And the entire public, it is surprising how within one hour, it is caught on like wildfire. So, or any media report. So the fact is this wildfire may sometimes have news which as in cow vigilantism in other cases may play a role which may become anti one particular person as compared who may actually be innocent. And how do you control what is what could be called an unruly horse? So the idea is how do you control an unruly horse yes. while you let media have its right to be the vigil of the people, which is why it's called, as Sanjay just said, the fourth pillar of democracy. Um, so I want to talk about the use of this phrase, media trial, was in the Frost program in interviews by David Frost. And um, Frost's competitive interview in 1967, where he challenged the fraudster before a studio audience. The interview was criticized as trial by television and IT managers worried that the interview compromised Savundra's right to a fair trial. Now, I want to go into some aspects of the original origin. And this is not of media trials. This is the origin of the influence of media. And you saw the influence when US President Bill Clinton was being tried and the question of his impeachment with regard to the Monica Lewinsky mm -hmm. affair, which many of you would have read about, heard about, and it was a subject matter of some gossip. So the Kenneth Starr, the prosecutor who was investigated started reporting and giving media leaks. This issue of a media leak is also, according to me, very relevant because should the press have, have access to media leaks by persons in authority? At the moment, for example, I'll uh, just refer to the Indrani Mukherjee case. Correct, correct. And the police commissioner or the IO in charge, who was number two or three in command, mm -hmm. was giving regular press reporting. And the court then questioned, can that, can that be permissible? Should a police authority whose job is to investigate should a police authority be giving? So police over the times, life has become such that external affairs ministry, which only spoke through its ambassador, now has a PRO in charge, a PR person who gives reporting to the press. Uh, similarly, 
the police have a person who will give reports because the public wants to know and the public and i'm not talking of the nation wants to know i'm just saying <laughs> the public has a right to know so if the public has some right to know should there be reporting and then the question is what should be the control in the reporting should newsworthy matter which is maybe inflammatory which may be prejudicial should such reporting be given by the investigating authority whose job is to investigate and not to be in the public sphere it is not the investigative authorities job to keep telling what is their stage of investigation one of the most important aspects of investigation is that it should be quiet it should be stop before us sorry there's a little bit of an echo now yeah. uh, i come back to the slide and the history of influence of media uh, during um, during the time when jews were being prosecuted the question that arose was what was the role of journalists what was the role of media and you would be surprised to know that in rwanda in the nuremberg trials those three journalists in germany and in later three journalists in rwanda were tried because they and one was labeled in germany as jew beta number 1 in rwanda also the role of those who were anti semitic and who felt that the jews should be prosecuted it spoke of them during the holocaust in such heinous terms in such heinous terms that it in fact incited public opinion which otherwise should not have they were normal people they were people living as neighbors as friends defending each other protecting each other public opinion was so incensed that people started killing and prosecuting their own best friends their own neighbors just because community which some journalists felt needed to be persecuted and uh, to be hated and this led to dehumanization of the minority they were frenzied uh, people so what were they called they said they are the face of the enemy they are impure they are vermin this was the language which was being used in newspapers in germany i when i visited in fact i uh, uh, went to one of the sites where they had these camps um, and i was surprised to see that the german chancellor the last german chan chancellor himself went there and knelt before the people and said i apologize for the excesses that we have done those excesses came partly because of the leadership but the leadership alone is one man two men five men 10 men what burns on that spirit it's the journalists so the power of the media as i said can be an unruly hawk Uh, unruly horse now next um, i wanted to read uh, the slide similarly radio television liberty mel which was held accountable for direct genocide by the international criminal tribunal in november 1994 uh, often referred to these people as cockroaches so you talked of them as vermin as cockroaches that's the kind of stereotyping 
of ethnic groups that happen at the hands of a media. And media thus has the powerful power of being balanced, of educating us, of making us thinking human beings, of training us not to be carried by our imagination, not to evolve concepts of hatred. Same media, if it plays a negative role, can make you hate the very people that you loved, the very people that you coexisted with for hundreds of years. Mm. Uh, I wanted to refer to this um, as it's a very recent um, a poster uh, and during the corona period, no Muslim trader will be allowed access until the coronavirus is completely gone. This came up in Mangalore, Karnataka. And it became so, so rampant that very few days ago, Mangalore and Bangalore, which have otherwise been most peaceful places, saw wide scale burning and um, riots. And this is so heart rendering that we are destroying our own public property. We are destroying our own people, people that we love by just thinking that they are faceless and they are a faceless enemy. So the fact is, we have to learn to coexist, to love our neighbors and to live like that. Um, I'll go on to the next slide. The influence of media. Now I am talking of Afsal Guru's case and I am not saying with what happened ultimately resulted in conviction. It resulted in death penalty, but it was based on circumstantial evidence. The point that I want to say, and there were many accused, there were I think about four or five accused, um, in which three were given death penalty and it was carried out. The then President Pranam Mukherjee uh, denied pardon um, God bless his soul. He's just passed away, or he's just very seriously ill, or uh, oh, he's seriously ill, ma'am. He's seriously he's ill with COVID, there. and he's on a ventilator just now. Yeah, yeah. But in what I want to tell you about Afsal Guru is not about the case, what happened, and what the court said. We are no one. We are students of law. Should read the judgment and see the difference between circumstantial evidence and direct evidence. Normally in case of circumstantial evidence, the courts are slow to give death penalty, but in terrorist crimes, the courts do it only in order that it, sh because it's the most heinous of crimes and innocent persons against whom you have no animus are put to death or killed in the most heinous way. But what I want to say is that the judgment of the court and look at clause two of the, the court reason that collective consciousness, conscience of the nation would be satisfied if capital punishment is argued, is uh, awarded. I want to ask you as students of law, what is collective conscience? This phrase is also used in the two, three judgments on whether to award death penalty or give life. Because as you know, India is a signatory to the convention for abolishment of death penalty. Yet in India, the rate of death penalties has increased. The National Law School Dwarka has in the last five years done a huge survey of all accused in jails who have been convicted for death penalty and are waiting the death row. 
And some of them, they said, were cases which according to them, those persons didn't have recourse to good lawyers. And therefore, I beseech all of you that when you work and you study, you must always do some pro bono work, work for some poor people, work for some needy people. It could be 5% of your practice. It could be 10% of your practice, but try and help those who are needy, you are students. So I am taking the liberty of sermonizing, even though I shouldn't. Now, what is collective conscience? Collective, I, I believe that in the courts of law, there should be no room for collective conscience, even though there are two, there are several Supreme Court judgments on it, including in Afsal Guru. Collective conscience is to a large extent media generated conscience. How does a person have a collective conscience? And I believe as students of law, if you look at it, courts should go by their own conscience and by their own precedence. But the truth is there is a terminology called collective conscience, and that also weighs with the courts. And that's why I want you to think how important is the role of media and how much media needs to have self-restraint so that while we are exercising this collective conscience by reading reports in the media, we don't get carried away and forget that there should be a rule of law. Um, so in Afsal's case, there were many discrepancies. There were, there was this journalist, there was this issue whether Afsal was one of the attackers or what happened. The question here is, media has an influence. So the first aspect we have to see is how influential is the media? And the next aspect we look at is then what happens if there is a media trial. So the first step is the influence of media, the influence of media in the Holocaust, in the World War, the influence of media in shaping public opinion all of us cannot live in a vacuum. We don't live in a world of a vacuum. When a matter begins, our mind is a clean slate. We are unbiased and we know nothing. But slowly we hear opinions, public opinions. We read all our social media handles. We see people who we follow. And over a period of time, we develop an opinion for one or the other side. And when we develop this opinion, it is to a large extent on what we have been fed. Because our minds can't continue in a vacuum when we are being bombarded with information or we are trying to absorb information. Uh, in this context, I want to touch slightly on me to the Me Too movement. And although there may be something laudatory about it, I also want to dis just refer to two cases. The case of Alok Nath, which started, gave him a very bad name and finally got closed. Uh, FI was also filed against him. Finally, the case was closed. It was an old case, some 20 or 30 year old case. Question is, how does a person give evidence in a 30 year old case? How does a person defend a 30 year old case? How does a person save his reputation even if he is left off in a 30 year old case? 
Now I want to discuss a case which in the Me Too movement would have been read by all of you. The case of Harvey Weinstein, which was a case, he was a movie mogul and extremely well known in Hollywood, extremely powerful. And over a period of time from the closet came dirty information. One spoke, then another spoke, then another spoke, then a deluge spoke. And it became the forerunner of the Me Too movement. And the US and the entire world took to it in order to discuss Weinstein and his trial. Did it impact his trial is what I want to ask. So according to me, there is no way that it would not have impacted his trial, even if he was guilty, which he's been held to be by the court. But the question is, can I declare a person in year 1998 guilty if his trial concludes in the year 2000, two years later? I don't think I have that right. And in this case, it's a very sad comment uh, that there were, there was a friend of Harvey Weinstein I think they were the, um, they were uh, wardens of one of the Harvard uh, camp uh, campuses, college campuses, and loved by all the students and adored by all the students. But they decided that they were lawyers, so they had a right or a duty to appear and they were part of the team. The husband became part of a team <laughs> which defended, uh, I'm sorry, it's raining here. Is it clear? Am I clear? Absolutely clear, ma'am. All right. Absolutely. Yes. All right. I think you mute it, ma'am, for the rest of the people, if you can. Okay. Bhumika, please tell. So yeah. I don't have the option to do okay. so. Okay. Now, now it's okay, ma'am. Please. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, now, what happened? I, uh, I'm sorry, let me go back to the earlier slide. I was still talking of Weinstein. No, yes. no. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Yes. So, um, this gentleman, his uh, term was expiring. But the atmosphere became so toxic. Against that ultimately his term was not extended only because he was lawyer of Harvey Weinstein and part of his team. Oh. And a person who had been a beloved man of the faculty, who had been a beloved man of the students. He was probably one of the most popular wardens, became a victim of a movement as a result of which the, his, he was doing his duty defending a person. Every person has a right of defense, but he was persecuted and his appointment was not renewed. And he had been there some, I think, 20 years or so. Similar story is of Nana Patikar, who was accused by Tanushri Datta. Now, she made some allegations in 2008, 
But then those allegations should have been, if they were true, they should have been contemporaneous. Instead, they resurfaced in 2018 with the Me Too movement having come alive. And just the same way as Ronald Sullivan suffered in the Weinstein case, and I'm not talking of Weinstein, I'm only talking of a man who was doing his duty, this faculty dean, Nana Padikar also, though he was cleared of sexual harassment charges, he law, his reputation would have suffered. Now, how do you repay a person for the loss of his reputation? How do you get back that man, his good reputation? That's unfortunately, the clock doesn't turn back. Now, the Priya Darshini Mattu case. My friend Sanjay talked about it. So I want to talk about it, but from a slightly different perspective. And my perspective is perhaps different than the perspective of most people who have said that media's role is positive in this case. So I say that he was the son of an inspector general and therefore the K and he'd been, he had been um, stalking this girl for very long, Tosh Kumar. And there were many, uh, she had even made a complaint saying that he was on a, a bike and he was perhaps stalking her at that time also many days before this incident. I don't think the case would have come to trial if media had not played a positive role, as Sanjay has said. But I think that we need to examine three judgments. The judgment of the Sessions Court, the judgment of the High Court, and the judgment of the Supreme Court. What the Sessions Court said, and I have a lot of regard for the judge who gave that judgment perhaps, is that it is very sad that I'm having to let go of this case and acquit it. But unfortunately, the police have not done their job. And the investigation has been shoddy. Now, the result was that his judgment was overturned by the High Court. I think it was Mr. Thareja's judgment. It was overturned by the High Court. And was that overturning was upheld by the Supreme Court. Somewhere, media does affect us. Our reading in the media that this was in fact a true case, even though the evidence may have slipped up somewhere, weighed heavily with us. But again, we should read these judgments and see whether there was an, some aspect of truth in what Mr. Thareja said and whether this aspect of the police investigation being shoddy, was it deliberate or not? and whether the police should not have been brought to Brook, if indeed it was shoddy. I'm not saying where he's, whether he, he should remain, have remained acquitted or the So sometimes perception makes a lot of difference, but the fact is 
may be despite the media the evidence was not as good as it was maybe the court found that the circumstantial evidence in this case finally the high court and supreme court found was sufficient because cases like this send a very wrong message if when there are acquittals but then what we have to make sure is that our police do a super job our police do a scientific job and wherever they don't do a good job the same should be overseen by senior people who ensure that the prosecution case is made completely tight but the flip side of the coin i would say is the arushi talwar case and it's even in the movie talwar i think it's called whether a movie should have been made at that time could have been made at that time and i compare this with the judgment in nirbhay all of you must be aware of the 2000 of nirbhay and in the in that case when at the appellate stage a movie was sought to be released called india's daughter about which my slide comes later but i am connecting it with the talwar movie and i feel sometimes it was necessary because if you are having adverse if you are allowing adverse uh, publicity to come in through media then something to counter that adverse publicity may also be necessary so question is the ideal situation is no publicity and that's my conclusion which you'll hear later when a matter is subjudice except in certain exceptions and i'll talk about the uk um it's a case which i like talking about and i'll refer to that but what i'm saying is that um there was a media trial countered by a movie which is also a media balancer and there are unfortunately very few people who get a media balancer because when media forms one view then it is that view that gets them the trps then there is no counter view and according to me the ideal situation is no publicity when a matter gets seized by the police except rightful reporting of what's actually happening and not view one way or the other but that's what is popular the public want nothing more than a good criminal investigation and which catches their imagination which is a story which they want to follow in the news the same way as today unfortunately the sushant singh rajput case is being followed so people it's newsworthy in it's something which the publish particularly when it is a loved loved figure of the public an actor a famous journalist a famous director a um, a public figure liberal hadith that is sorry 
it's okay ma'am it's okay yes. i'm sorry there's yeah. some yeah. disturbance yeah yeah so so just tell me if the sound becomes too much i'll go uh go to a quieter area if the no, absolutely yeah. fine this is perfect is the word perfect okay. is the word right now uh, similarly so you have cases like priyadarshini mattu you have arushi where according to me just the bare fact that there is a closure of investigation saying nothing found then the mm -hmm. court disagrees with the closure report in up then the matter goes to one cbi team and it says innocent then it goes to another cbi team that says guilty how can investigation by three wings come to three different results this itself is the one answer why death penalty should be abolished because there is no certainty and that's why you don't have the right but i'm not talking of death penalty today i am talking about trial and influence of the media now in this richika garotra case this ips officer sps rathor would have never never they would have it would unless or even in some of the khap panchayat cases these are people who have virtually no influence and so if they were not if it was not for the media these cases would actually die a very unnatural quiet death and the only reason that they survive is because we have a vigilant media so um i now uh, come to the fact that there was this unfortunate battle in cbi i mean we have a premier investigative agency in which we so called repose so much faith and yet there are leaks at the highest level and so this is why justice gagoi said he was deeply upset and disturbed as to how alok verma's response got leaked to the press when it was supposed to be um in uh, when it was supposed to be in sealed cover and quietly submitted to the court we lawyers all of us who participate in the criminal justice system have a responsibility to behave in the most responsible in the most uh, reined in manner we should not allow this whole the requirements of the media who will keep asking you because they need a story so they will keep asking please tell us the low down please give us this information can you give us extra information but the need for lawyers is also to express restraint and to state only what is a matter of record in court proceedings now in the us this aspect of freedom of expression which is in the first amendment and which the us treats as sacrosanct and then we have the sixth amendment which is we have a right to a fair trial now how do the two go together on one hand you have freedom of expression that should mean 
the press can do pretty much whatever reporting and the laws of defamation in the US are very stringent. So while the US gives a lot of freedom to the press because they don't want to restrict freedom of expression, at the same time, it, if there is something defamatory post facto, then that defamatory statement post facto will also incur so much fines that even sections of the press have found it crippling economically, which is why they will verify every news before they allow to be reported because wrong reporting has its penal consequences in terms of damages. And in that context, let me come back to this aspect. Why do we continue some offenses as criminal offenses, even though they shouldn't be on the statute book? It is only that I have our judicial system is overburdened and we cannot allow a person's reputation to keep being tarnished by wrong news, which later gets only a token fine. I'm sure most of you know of the trial of OJ Simpson it's a beautiful series in Netflix and you and even and he's written a book called so which was after the event. So the book is quite different from the series, but all of them are worth watching as people interested in criminal law and criminal jurisprudence as well as criminal trials. He was accused of murdering his wife and her friend. His wife was stated to have been petrified of him and he was stated to have a terrible temper, temper. But the case became, it's one of the most historical trials the US has ever known. And to some extent, it became a community feeling that if he was convicted, it would be almost as if he was being persecuted and not convicted. He was held not guilty the trial was watched by millions and millions of people. The lawyer's role is also very interesting. If you see it in the movie and their cross-examination is interesting. But what is most interesting is how social media has totally taken over and conquered the world. How electronic media has totally conquered the world. Another famous case was in the US and these two cases have made the US rethink a bit. That should media be untrammeled, unbridled freedom. So Casey, Sim Casey Anthony's case her little daughter, she had woods as part of her house or joining her house. Bo daughter of body of her daughter was discovered there. And she came to be tried as the murderer of her daughter. Became a very famous trial. The media was after her blood 
the public was after her blood. I believe it became part of 4 p.m. show, every day show. But fortunately, she was found not guilty despite the media trial and the social media trial. But these two cases so much moved the legislatures, legislators that the question became, should, should there be more restrictions or more re regulations on the media? So in the US, you have mostly jury trials and you sequester the jury, which is you keep them locked up so that once the trial begins, they have no access to newspapers, no access to mobiles, no access to anyone. And so they cannot be influenced because in the last line, Judges are also humans. So now let's turn to the UK. I've, as I told you that this case, the thalidomide case is a famous case. I don't know how much I've written about it, but it was a case of people taking thalidomide, which was a drug without realizing that it had fatal consequences on pregnant women leading to deformed children and huge problems. Thousands of women suffered. They were all wanting to file cases. The pharma company was a very famous company. And as you know, pharma companies are some of the richest in the world. They tried to keep breaking off each complainant and settling with them at paltry amounts. The UK normally believed that no one should be reporting cases if they were subjudice, which is what I believe, except to give the actual report, which is what I believe should be the law. But even the case wouldn't come for hearing and the longer it delayed, the more people's pockets emptied, the more they settled, the more the case didn't go on. So the Times reported, the Sunday Times reported the matter and said, why are these cases not being heard? The, the government solicitor general or additional solicitor, whatever the prosecutor was also not pushing the case. When the Sunday Times reported, they were taken to court saying, how did you breach the right to fair trial? But they said successfully, Lord Denning said, this is an exception because if you allow cases to, because of influence and power and unequal power to go under the carpet, then the newspaper has its right to be vig vigilant and to bring them to the fore. The European Union Court also upheld this aspect when it was later brought to them. And this judgment is hailed as the wonderful balancing judgment, which says that when the question is of subjudice matters, matters which are pending in court and non-reporting of them or non-talking of them 
which may be resulting in a miscarriage of justice, then the newspaper has a right to speak and the courts will defend that and protect that. Uh, you have to tell me whether there are questions and answers. Yes, there are, uh, ma'am. So because uh, then... Uh... So we are already at 6.14. Yes. I thought that I will come to last couple of slides because you've got a sense of what I'm saying. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's a lot of and, questions are coming. Uh, so, uh, let me come to this slide where I've paused. I missed uh, some of the U U.S. precedents, and I just wanted to talk about the Jessica Lal Manu Sharma case. And this also only because I want to give a slightly different perspective to it. So the Jessica Lal case, to my mind, this was one of media's great successes. And there are no two bones about it. But I also want to speak. This man served his sentence, got remission, very recently was released from prison after serving his period and getting his remission for good behavior. But the media went apoleptic as to why he was being released. Here's a man, he's done his sentence. Our law is not eye for eye. Our law is about reform, about deterrence, and not about retribution. So we have to give every human being a chance to live their lives in peace, decently, if they have served their sentence. We cannot do a witch hunt. We cannot hound people. And that is what, why I'm referring to this case, though, as I said, it is to be applauded, this and Nitish Katara cases, because powerful opponents powerful accused, but having served his sentence and been a very model, good person in prison who has done a lot of good work, we have to let them live their lives with peace and dignity. So I want to end only with the recommendation of, of for, with this quote and the recommendation of the 200th Law Commission, that when a certain case is in court, media starts a parallel trial, it's not good, let the courts first decide on a matter, then media can criticize it. I have missed out two, three judgments, both on that India's daughter and the Nirbhai case, which I've referred to, PUCL versus State of Maharashtra, uh, where again, Justice Nariman, I think Justice Lokur, Justice Loda said, newspaper reporting has to be responsible. When, when a matter's in court, they can't be giving opinions which are completely biased. The 200th Law Commission report says that when a charge is being filed or charge sheet is filed in court, when charge is framed, after that, the media should not do anything but reporting. I don't agree with it. It's already too late if you're doing it once charge sheet and charge is being filed. 
it's from the beginning when the matter in FIR is being lodged or a complaint is being lodged, investigative authorities should be allowed to do their duty except for the vigil of the, of the media that it should not be brushed under the carpet at the instance of powerful people. Other than that, they should only be true reporting and not opinionative reporting. And with that, may I conclude? Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, there are a lot of questions. And I want to say one more thing that today, this session, the, the number of the people who had, I said, uh, it's in three digit plus, still intact. So that was the, your charisma, as I always say. Uh, very, very thankful to you, ma'am. And I would request uh, Bhumika, who has taken note of few questions. She would quickly ask, then uh, we know uh, by 6.30, we will close this another 15, 20 minutes, 15, 10 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Bhumika, please. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, there comes this question that, is it true that the media trials are a result of police incompetence? Uh, uh, see, they are not only the result. Should I put stop share? Will that help? Yeah, stop share. Yeah, that, that will help. Yeah, and then, all right. Or, uh, so, uh, according to me, I wish they were a result of police incompetence because in that case, they would be fair. But even before the police get a chance to report, and I come back to the Sushant case, I don't know whether it was um, homicidal or suicidal. But I do know that the police is still investigating and has examined many people. To carry on a parallel trial is what the Supreme Court has repeatedly said, don't do. But none of us are listening to that. And to my mind, the victims in this case may then not be able to live their rest of their lives in peace, even if they go through a trial and acquit it, or even if the case is closed. This, according to me, is the very anathema of due process of law and right or presumption of innocence. Uh, uh, that is what uh, we, we say that, uh, you know, that is the impact of media. It, even if the, the judgment will be there, as you have rightly said, they, they will uh, not, uh, uh, you know, they, the people, they make the media's reporting, make them so convinced that yes, without trial, that person is con convicted. So, that. so I want to give one quote from, uh, of Supreme Courts in that Zaira Sheikh famous matter versus State of Gujarat. Uh -huh. A fair trial obviously would mean a trial before an impartial judge, a fair prosecutor, and in an atmosphere of judicial calm. Fair trial means a trial where bias or prejudice or for or against an accused witnesses or the cause is eliminated. Now we should give everyone that right, yes. every human being, has that innate right in a democracy done by rule of law that is India. And where, you know, it reminds me of that, uh, um, uh, that Bombay blast case. We provided lawyer to the, that, uh, that uh, uh, terrorist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, so th that is our law. It is not. That is that, our law. That is our law. Now, I, I also want to mention here that Shushan Singh case, few of the media houses are totally and totally working on it. I have no doubt, uh, you know, no, uh, this, uh, this thing in saying that, uh, what is his name, that Republic TV is in-house doing all nonsense sometimes, you know, in, 
taking. I don't know what they wanted to prove. So that that's so the ownership of media houses is also very very important. They have their own linkages. They have they know that they have the power to uh, you know impress the people, and that's what they are. I would say misusing this thing. That's what. Bhumika, next question, please. Uh, Ma'am, a very question from my side as well. So please. we saw the Nirbhaya case, and that was again turned into a media trial, which. gave rise to the juvenile detention act which was later amended because of the very perplexity that the media had taken it into account that juveniles are often not given the punishment that they deserve to be so, but at the same time we see media houses uh, in the case of shushant singh rajput that they are exploiting the evidences and making a huge hype out of it uh, now we cannot have a proper uh, restriction on the media house so how to create that balance between the two so so the balance for media has to be a self restraint see if we do censorship then we will also get spoil our democracy so the question here is we i always say that maybe there is not so much uh excitement in watching something which is a debate because it's too staid and there may be another debate which is very exciting but i feel that every media house owes it to the public maybe they have a viewpoint and everyone is entitled to their viewpoint but i think we can't necessarily do 50 50 of the viewpoint but we can do 25 75 of a viewpoint so <laughs> that the entire picture can come to those who want to think whether it's right or wrong and that's why i feel that and for this uh i have um i have um, great admiration for john stuart mill who was a philosopher who said truth is like a pyramid which has many sides and you don't know that the one man who is arguing against the 99 may later turn out to be right so the one dissenting opinion for example in adm jabalpur may turn out to be the future correct that's very well said ma'am uh, if i can uh, still have some time to prompt another question yeah please do please do Uh, the question reads that media is often of course, called the fourth pillar permission also ma'am uh, another 5 to 10 minutes 5 minutes more yeah yeah no thank problem. you very much thank you very much please bhumika yes ma'am two more questions so uh, the media is often uh, said as the fourth pillar of democracy but often it is seen that it has turned into an opinionated media uh, which is often influenced by politics as well so how can uh, the normal citizen differentiate between a political opinion and the real news and what to rely on in the today's media houses very it's a very difficult question <laughs> very difficult. because right. because there is there is you can't even you can't even mark a person or a channel as being non newsworthy and damn it so you it can only be by, by discerning particular opinions that you will realize whether in a particular subject because nobody can be wrong all the time nobody can be right all the time so it is the patience and the ability to listen to adverse opinion and then reason for yourself 
which is the best test and you can't say somebody is all good and somebody is all bad bhumika do you have uh, yeah please go ahead with another question one uh, last this is the last one ma'am thank you sure sir uh, we have a question that is failure of prosecution to defend the case uh, a part of the right to fair trial is failure of the prosecution to defend the case of his client a part of the right to fair trial see this question slightly let me try and interpret the question a prosecutor doesn't defend a case he prosecutes the prosecutes case. the case so uh, is the failure of the prosecution to do his job properly is that see uh, ultimately law is a service and as service you can never be perfect uh and that is why you will have lawyers and lawyers you will have doctors and doctors some more skilled some less skilled so i know many good prosecutors i think some of the prosecutors in nirbhay were excellent the investigation in nirbhay was excellent and i feel many of the prosecutors work under very adverse situations and they work well i only have one thing to say for the prosecution you don't have to succeed in your case you have to succeed in arriving at the truth so even if you lose a case kudos to you if you helped in bringing out the truth exactly and that's the job of a prosecutor prosecutor yes that's very well said ma'am so the ultimate objective should be the justice justice should be delivered it's not that your target is that as we do in the corporate world that this much is the target you have to achieve this this much these are the cases the uh, the punishment should be this much no your target should be whether as the rule also is there ma'am that uh, 100 guilt uh, 100 people who are uh, you know criminals they should be uh, left uh, but one uh, you know innocent person should not be uh, punished so on that note i suppose i would request uh, bhuvika to uh, please give a thank note to the ma'am and it was really wonderful and uh, very enlightening thank you very much and um, i have no words to say thanks and you have taken out so much good time for us uh, it's really we we all are indebted ma'am thank you very much and keep uh, we we pray to god for your good health very long life and so that your blessings are always on all of us all the student community who are there as well as you you know you give shower your love on all of us thank you very much ma'am bhumika your turn thank you for hosting me thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thank you over to bhumika thank yeah, you bhumika. uh ma'am just before that a lot of audience member are asking for the presentation that you presented since they liked it a lot if we can have a copy of it for I'll sure share. i'll share it. i will i will share it with uh, we have thank got you, uh, thank uh, you so much. we will share it and i think ma'am it was truly a pleasure to host you on my part and on part of bsk legal and briefcase and truly uh, the bhumika session... i'm sorry uh, i'm interrupting we have honorable shri rajiv khanna ji is uh, there in the session i he was my teacher and he was a mentor to he is a mentor to i don't know n number of students uh, mr khanna is there i'm so grateful to you sir and he was there since the beginning ma'am i don't can we have him unmuted please uh, please unmute ma'am uh, sir Rajiv, please unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, now now it is unmuted. Thank you for being there, Rajiv. And since the beginning, I I just saw him again since the beginning, and uh, so grateful to you, sir. You've been a great inspiration for many of us, all the uh, students. To all of us. All of us. No doubt, and the way 
you used to guide i remember it is 25th year today uh, today only i completed my 25th year of uh, registration today is the date and uh, the 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 credit goes to these pillars of the university we have a great respect regard we have to have rajiv say a few words for Please 5 sir. minutes can we over stretch our time by 5 minutes of course of course for, for, yes i think there is some problem with the uh, we are not able to hear you sir hmm. if so could you use uh, ear plugs or some sort of other means uh, to convey his message that's a uh, little difficulty we are not able to hear you sir yeah 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 but anyways that's a, his presence has uh, given us immense pleasure i must say true thank you very much bhumika you please continue sure sir uh, indeed ma'am it was a pleasure to host you today and all the questions though they were very peculiar in nature by the students they were answered very correctly and very uh, in a very systematical and practical way in which we could approach them and indeed the whole session was very informative and thank you so much ma'am for taking out the time from your busy schedule and devoting us the same thank you so much ma'am my pleasure thank you so grateful to you ma'am uh, once thank you so much thank you so much lovely to see uh, rajiv here and uh, <laughs> so thank you for all of you for listening to me no grateful to you thank you ma'am uh, and uh, i am amazed with the number of people who are and messages there are more than 1000 messages on youtube 1000 <laughs> never ever it has happened you know <laughs> bigger institutions when they do it then also this much number doesn't come so it is your aura your uh, oh. oh sir is clapping for you ma'am <laughs> sir, is, <laughs> sir is clapping for you <laughs> thank you rajiv uh, thank you everyone thank you very much uh, thank you uh, ma'am thank you bhumika i would request you to close the session thank you very much ma'am and have a nice stay in masuri Uh, i know uh, you are going to come back on 22nd i suppose yes yes yeah thank yes. you very much once again ma'am for giving your time thank you thank you ma'am thank you so thank much thank you rajiv the participants may start leaving